Hello everyone, welcome. It's Jenneth here of Secret Place Devotion and I warmly welcome you to day nine in the Secret Garden and I encourage you to subscribe so that you can be notified of these videos as they come up on a weekly basis. I have some lovely books and a gorgeous pop-up book to share with you today with exquisite illustrations and poetry from one of my favorite authors and we will be finishing with a time of prayer and blessing. So let's start with day nine in Unlocking the Secret Garden. You can get your own copy. I will provide links to all of the books in the description box below to make it easy for you to access any of the material and if I can, I like to put a link to the books that you can actually borrow from an online library called archive.org. And that is an amazing tool that I've just recently discovered that you can borrow and read from your device as though you're going into a library and borrowing books. And so if I can find some of these books from there, I'll make sure to put those links as well in the description box below. So let's start with day nine in the secret garden. What do you do when you feel so tired from holding on to questions with no answers? When you feel the timeline of your life is pressed on pause? Head over to the river in the secret garden. It's good for more than swimming. This living water is also good for drinking. A river rushes through your secret garden to quench your most profound thirst. This is where Holy Spirit lifts the weight of time. Yes, it's not too late for you. It's never too late or far gone. It's never over the hill because the ever flowing renewal of spirit soothes your wounds with a brightness of hope in each word spoken. I am enough for you. You have not missed the way. I am the way. Keep in step with spirit. When you are tired, take a rest and know that every one of your questions can settle in my all-knowing presence. Be not afraid. I am the calm you seek. I am your refuge, diligent help, wise advice, and great provider. No, it's never too late for you, dear heart. You will begin again. How wonderful to know that our questions have a safe space to rest. I think that mystery is so essential to our life on earth that we don't have all of the answers causes us to reach out to the one who does. We may not yet have all the answers to our questions and our sufferings and our sorrows we don't even know when things may shift in a more positive direction. And yet, we can lean into the love that holds and supports us and is a safe place to carry every question we have in this life. The prayer activation for today is a body prayer. And... My dear friend Inga, just this last week, brought to my attention some music, um, which I will put into the description box below. And you can use this music for the prayer activation. Put on some music for movement. Today, spend some time moving to the music. Allow your body to respond to the music. Your dance 
is embodied prayer, a freely flowing expression to God. Even if you're in a place where you're not able to dance freely, music can cause our bodies to respond. And soothing, calming music can help us to connect in our bodies with the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I encourage you to take some time for this prayer activation. It is so good to bring our bodies, bodily senses into our time of prayer, especially when we are contemplating things like time feeling too heavy, things not happening as fast as we would like them to, feeling as though breakthrough has been too long in coming. I had a sense yesterday evening when I was driving along the road that the Lord was calling me into a settling of his time in my time. And when his time comes into our time, it causes us to not rush or feel like we are in a fast pace moving towards a destination, but we can rather settle into the current space, even with its complications. And that trust brings us to a place of hope and peace once again. And the quote for today comes with this lovely painting of a leaf which for me is a lovely symbol of our autumn season. And many of you are currently in a spring on the threshold of burgeoning new life, noticing the sprouting of flowers and the, the thawing of the snows. For us here in South Africa, we are having a goldening of leaves. How wonderful that we can have completely different seasons on either side of the planet and yet both experience the blessings of a turning and changing season. So the quote for today is of Julian of Norwich and it says, for our soul sits in God in true rest and our soul stands in God, in sure strength. And our soul is naturally rooted in God, in endless love. You might like to pause the video now. Take some time to think over that quote. And head over to the link of music for your time of embodied movement and prayer. I would now like to read to you a poem connected with our theme of the living river that quenches our thirsts. That is an ongoing quench of thirst because I certainly experience thirst on a daily basis. I need to meet with the Lord. And I need the Holy Spirit to quench my thirst. And it's that rushing living river welling up from within that causes us to live in the constant now of access to a place that can quench our thirst. Not a once off experience, but a constant now in the presence of God. So I'm going to read to you from one of my favorite authors that my dear mom introduced to us from a young age, and that is Elizabeth Googe. And in fact, my mom has collected Elizabeth Googe books over the years and has passed this passion over to me. And for Christmas this year, I got this beautiful copy of a book of compilation of poetry and writings on a theme of comfort, a book of comfort by Elizabeth Googe. And I'm going to read to you the poem called Fountain 
by Elizabeth Jennings. Let it disturb no more at first than the hint of a pool predicted far in a forest, or a sea so far away that you have to open your window to hear it. Think of it then as elemental, as being necessity, not for a cup to be taken to it, and not for lips to linger or eye to receive itself back in reflection, simply as water the patient moon persuades and stirs. And then step closer. Imagine rivers you might indeed embark on, waterfalls where you could silence an afternoon by staring but never see the same tumult twice. Yes, Come out of the narrow street and enter the full piazza. Come where the noise compels. Statues are bowing down to the breaking air. Observe it there. The fountain. Too fast for shadows. Too wild for the lights which illuminate it to hold. Even a moment. An ounce of water back. Stare at such prodigality and consider. It is the elegance here. It is the taming. The keeping fast in a thousand flowering sprays that builds this energy up, but lets the watchers see in that stress an image of utter calm, a stillness there. It is how we must have felt once at the edge of some perpetual stream, fearful of touching, bringing no thirst at all, panicked by no perception of ourselves, but drawing the water down to the deepest wonder. So many beautiful images to capture the mind and imagination in this poem. You may like to rewind and listen to it again. Take some time to contemplate the images that come up especially for you. I'm now going to share with you this wonderful book of inspiration in the secret garden. It is called The Creation and it's a pop-up book with the illustrations of Brian Wildsmith. Let's go through it together. We we'll start off with the creation isn't this wonderful? And I find going through a book like this just brings the heart so much delight. It's the childlike, it's the childlike part in us that likes to engage with a book like this. Well, certainly I do. And I don't think I'll ever grow up and not enjoy a pop-up book. There are levers to pull and special things to discover. And here is the teeming life under the waters. That brings to mind the life of God in the living waters of his spirit that he brings forth in us, that he wants to meet our thirst with his living water. Look how living it is. Just um, just alive with so much joy and abundance. Teeming with life. And for those of you in the spring season where the birds are starting to nest, and it brings to mind the poem I read last week, The Country Diary of an Edwardian Lady. 
you may like to go back to that one if you haven't listened to that yet of the thrush the song thrush in the nest and here is a little bird feeding her young if you can see the egg hatching isn't that delightful and finally this wonderful array of life full abundant life in the Godhead and the sun of righteousness rising with healing in his wings. I once again invite you to subscribe so that you can be notified of all the videos as they come up on a weekly basis. It is so special to share this time with you. Once again, thank you for the comments. So enjoy reading your comments. Let's finish in a time of prayer. I want to use the scripture from John 4 as a place from which to pray. Verse 13 through to 14 in the Passion Translation. It is the story of Jesus when he met with the Samaritan woman at the well. And I encourage you to read the whole chapter and refresh yourself in this wonderful encounter that Jesus has with the Samaritan lady. And just this scripture that I'll be using for our time of prayer where Jesus answered, If you drink from Jacob's well, you'll be thirsty again and again. But if anyone drinks the living water I give them, they will never thirst again and will be forever satisfied. For when you drink the water I give you, it becomes a gushing fountain of the Holy Spirit, springing up and flooding you with endless life. I read that to you from the, from the Bible app, which has the Passion Translation and many other translations in it. And I will include a link to that app in the description box below. It is such a wonderful contemplation. The words of Jesus as he spoke to the Samaritan woman that the reason our thirsts can be forever quenched is because there is a continual flow of living water through us in the now moment. We can access that awareness by tapping in to the flow of his spirit that is gushing forth from within living waters to quench us in every moment and especially in the moment of our most urgent need just coming back to that place of awareness and stillness leaning back into the love and drinking from that spring is so important and i'm going to finish with the time of reading to you from celtic prayers and prayer together a blessing that we need for for this time a blessing of peace beautiful calligraphy in this wonderful book of celtic prayers Peace between neighbours, between kindred, between lovers, in love of the King of Life. Peace between person and person. Peace between wife and husband. Peace between woman and children. The peace of Christ. Above all peace. Amen. And I pray for your precious child listening today, Lord, that your peace is resting on them, the fullness of your peace. I thank you that your rivers of living water will quench their every thirst. I thank you that there is a permanent flow of your living spirit flowing through them, Lord 
and that you can bring us to more of an awareness of living in the now moment of that living presence of water that quenches our every thirst. I pray for everyone who is feeling dry and barren and longing for you, Lord, to meet them in a place of peace. And their questions, those who are feeling that the weight of time is so heavy, I pray that they will feel you lift the weight of time, Lord, and give them a sense of your eternity within our time frame, that there is a bigger picture that we cannot yet comprehend that will comfort them in this time of need. I pray, Lord, that even contemplating your creation, as we've looked at the beautiful book of Brian Wildsmith today, that your creation power can not only create new life and bring forth new life, but can also resurrect the places inside of us that feel dead. One breath from your mouth and resurrection life happens. Lord, I pray for your precious child listening today that they will feel you bringing new life, bringing resurrection life, and bringing peace that transcends their every understanding. Now I bless you now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I pray for you that your week will be covered by the peace of Christ. And I look forward to the next time with you in the secret garden. Until then, goodbye.